Hello, I'm doing a book review, and the book I want to review is Fallen Angel by William Hortzberg. I have no idea if I'm saying his last name right or not, but uh, William Hortzberg, if I'm saying his name right, would actually go on to write the screenplay for the Ridley Scott film Legend, and he's written a number of other books and screenplays as well. Now, this book was actually the base for the 1987 Alan Parker film Angel Heart, which starred Mickey Rourke and Robert De Niro. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about the film adaptation of this book at the end of this review. Now, Fallen Angel was published in 1978, and this is pretty much the classic detective story. Like, it's very much written in the style of one of those hard-boiled detective novels. It's very much the classic detective story, only with a supernatural twist. Now, the plot of Fallen Angel is it's set in New York City in 1959, and it's about this private eye detective named Harry Angel, who is hired by this man named Louis Cipher to look for this missing person named Johnny Favorite, with whom Cipher had a contract with. Now, this man, Johnny Favorite, was a jazz musician who was popular before the Second World War, but he was drafted into World War II, and at a certain point, his army base was attacked, and he was sent home pretty much as a vegetable. Like, he was pretty much sent home in a catatonic state. And as far as anybody knew, Favorite has been spending all these years in a private mental hospital, but it turns out this is not the case, and Cypher claims he doesn't even know whether or not Johnny is alive or dead, and he's hiring Harry Angel to try to figure out whether or not Johnny Favorite is alive or dead. Now, as the story goes on, you find out that Cypher does know a lot more than he's letting on. So, throughout the story, Harry Angel is looking for this man named Johnny Favorite, but everybody he questions about favorite ends up getting brutally murdered, and he finds out that Johnny Favorite was involved with black magic and voodoo cults and satanic cults, and basically Angel himself ends up getting pulled into this underworld of the occult. And this is a minor spoiler, but you eventually find out that this man, Louis Cipher, who hired Harry Angel, is actually Satan himself in human form. So as I said, Fallen Angel is pretty much the classic detective story. Only in this story, the detective in question is employed by a client, and that client happens to be the devil. And what I really liked about Fallen Angel was this combination of the detective-slash-murder-mystery genre with the supernatural horror genre. And the book is actually quite disturbing. Like, some of the murders that happen in this book are really freaking gruesome. And there's also one particularly disturbing scene in this book that involves an orgy, a satanic ritual, and a baby. And that's all I want to say about this particular scene in the book, but it is a really disturbing scene in the novel. And once again, it is a really disturbing book, and what I really like about this book is, once again, it's this combination of the hard-boiled detective story with a supernatural horror story. And it's also a really quick read, too. Like, this is an extremely fast-paced novel. Now, I really can't talk about this book much more without spoiling too much. I mean, I already kind of gave away a spoiler by revealing that Louis Cipher is Lucifer, but his name does kind of give it away. But once again, I don't want to give away much else about the story. All I will say about this story is I feel like one of the major themes in this book is the theme of identity and the masks that we wear in the identity that we assume. That's all I want to say, but I think identity is a major theme within the story. 
Now, one thing I liked about this book is the book does address that there is a difference between voodoo and Satan worshipping, even though our culture kind of lumps those two things together, because you realize that Johnny Favorite was involved with both voodoo and Satan worshipping, and at a certain point in the story, the character of Harry Angel becomes involved with this young woman named Epiphany Proudfoot, and the reason he becomes involved with her was because it turns out that Johnny Favorite was involved with her mother a long time ago, and he, like, starts to question her about Johnny Favorite, but the two of them develop this relationship with each other. But at a certain point in the story, uh, Harold Angel accuses her of being a devil worshipper, and she gets really offended by this, and the book does address that there is a difference between between devil worshipping and voodoo. Now, while I thought this was a really good book, I did have some minor problems with it. Like, there were little things in the book that I thought were a little cheesy. For example, when Harry Angel first meets Cypher, he meets him at this restaurant, and the address of the restaurant is actually 666. And I was like, okay, that's a little freaking on the nose. And also, I mentioned the scene that involves a satanic ritual and a baby, and while this is a really freaking disturbing scene, there is something a little over the top about it as well, but maybe that was the point, but there are some minor flaws in the book, but overall, it is a really good novel. Now, as I mentioned before, this book was also the basis for Alan Parker's 1987 film, Angel Heart. Now, now, the movie Angel Heart is one of my all-time favorite movies. Now, the movie actually changes a lot from the book, but I do think the movie stays true to the general themes of the novel, but the movie changes a lot from the source material. But truth be told, even though I thought this was a really good book, I actually think Alan Parker improved on some things from the original novel. For example, the entirety of this book takes place in New York City, whereas in the movie, it begins in New York City, but at a certain point in that movie, Harry Angel's investigations lead him to New Orleans, and just the whole setting of New Orleans gave that film such a unique mood and atmosphere that I don't think the book really had. I also think the movie downplayed some of the aspects of this story that I thought were a little over the top. Like, all the supernatural aspects of this story were very nuanced in the movie, to a point where the movie felt very reality-based, even with all the supernatural elements. So in a lot of ways, I actually think Alan Parker did improve on this story when he adapted it into the film Angel Heart. Even though I still think this is a really good book, I actually think the movie improved on some things from the book. Now, in the movie, Mickey Rourke played Harold Angel, and that was easily one of Mickey Rourke's best performances, and frankly, I think he should have gotten a freaking Oscar for his role in that movie. Like, you just got such raw emotion from that performance. Like, it was such an emotional performance, and you really got a sense of how this case was really starting to break Harold Angel down psychologically, even more so than you got in the book. And in the movie, Robert De Niro plays Louis Cipher, or Satan, and it's it was easily one of Robert De Niro's best performances. The movie also starred Lisa Bonet, who is perhaps most famous for her role on The Cosby Show. In the movie, she played Epiphany Proudfoot, and she also did a really good job in the movie. And the movie is actually quite infamous for a particular sex scene between Mickey Rourke and Lisa Bonet that almost got the film an X rating. But yeah, if you haven't seen the movie Angel Heart, it's a film I highly recommend. I almost recommend 
recommend it more so than the book, because, once again, I think Alan Parker improved on some things from the book. But once again, this is a review on the book, not the movie, so overall, like, I recommend the book, but I also highly recommend checking out the movie as well. But yeah, that was my review on Fallen Angel by William... Hortzberg, once again, I have no idea if I'm saying his last name right, and I'm not sure if it's Hortzberg or Jortzberg, like, I'm not sure if, like, the H or the J is silent. Somebody in the comments correct me on how I actually say his last name, but, yeah, that was my review on Fallen Angel, and bye.